and very constricting and you're not allowed to deviate from these plans and then you become a part of this sort of team right like the people that are in crossfit you ever you ever met uh, a crossfit person uh, who can't the shut the fuck up right. about the workout right. of the day right and it's positive they're in shape they look fu- but they look crazy like they can't wait to go back and do chin-ups right like they get out of their mind and it's a very beneficial thing don't get me wrong but there's a thing that people do where they get a part of a, a, a team or a group or you you're you're one of those now you know hey I'm a I'm an ultra marathon runner right, now and right. then like I'm in that group that's right yep yep I just reviewed this book for the Wall Street Journal on CrossFit training and what it means to be fit now versus when I was in my 20s say and uh, you know back when Nautilus was introduced you know the idea was you're gonna isolate the muscle groups yeah everybody's like yeah that's good isolate the muscle groups so this author is going why is that good whoever where how did it ever get established that isolating a muscle group is a good thing and he shows that you know free weights you're using all of your body every muscle tendon you know just the balance and the move and all that stuff it's much better but then i more i looked into it i thought well of course this is when high schools started introducing physical education. You got to go in the gym. Everybody's in the gym. You can't turn loose thousands of teenage kids in free weight rooms and not have injuries. So the Nautilus machine, that was the solution. It's isolated. No one's going to get hurt. You can turn loose. Somebody knows. You can't clean and jerk a big weight and not have somebody explain how to do it without getting hurt. Yeah, that's certainly true. But I think the big aspect of it was people like to make things more complicated than they need to be or they always like to invent some new way to do things and sometimes that new way to do things looks awesome like a nautilus machine right i mean they have the big cam system right, and there's right. the cables and you get the the plates you put the pin in the plate and you get to move it up and down right. and it's all <laughs> right i mean it looks amazing yeah but as far as like it being beneficial to promoting functional strength it's not nearly as good as those like olympic lifts that people do like clean and press but those are not that glamorous right you know those machines are very glamorous right you know you could you could tell people that you're pulling the whole stack look i've got the whole stack you <laughs> right. know those isolating movements at one point in time were thought to be the best way to develop muscle because they're really good for bodybuilding you know but there's a difference between like w- when someone looks really good like there's certain looks that you can achieve like giant right. biceps and right where they're completely out of balance, but then they have like a little neck and they have no legs. <laughs> right. like, it's not it's not healthy, but they want big biceps, so they just keep constantly doing right. curls. Right. So you can get like really out of whack doing those sort of exercises if you're not careful. But if you want to be a bodybuilder, that was always the protocol. Like if you look at how Arnold lifted, now a lot of these Franco Colombo guys, like they were all into isolation exercises. A lot mm, of different. Okay. I, they did a lot of tricep extensions. They did a lot of things to pump those muscles up. Right. They did a, you know squats and leg presses and stuff too. But a lot of it was involving like hitting specific muscle groups to, to accentuate those. You know, but it's just wasn't the way to go but people for a long time thought those machines were the shit they're like this is this is my solution in my review i wrote about this guy i met back in the 80s when i got into bike racing uh, named phil granasha he was mr california bodybuilder um in 1954 the year i was born and through the 50s and early 60s that he was you know just lifting weights mr bodybuilder then he uh, met a cyclist that said what why don't you go in san francisco why don't you come out we got the sunday ride going up in the local hills oh i'm gonna <laughs> kick their ass <laughs> kick their ass <laughs> said he got dropped on the first hill bye-bye they're gone <laughs> and he realized wait a minute maybe i'm not fit you know he was mr not, not mr california yeah but, but also mr fitness or the most fit person in california so he realized i'm not fit i got no cardiovascular so that's he took up cycling and so on but um you know so this crossfit book it was that these people are more balanced that was the idea i guess Mm. because you don't even know what you're going to do for the competition right you show up and it could be any one of these different tasks yeah so you have to be more well-rounded well as opposed to i can lift this one particular nautilus weight yeah i read something about crossfit taking a critical role in our society that there was a, a c- c- comparison to CrossFit and religion. And they were saying that essentially as people become more secular and they move away from religion, they gravitate towards things like CrossFit that give them this sort of sense of community and shared experience and uh, like uncommon 
shared experience because like the average person you go to work and you got calluses that are bleeding yeah did my uh, workout of the day today <laughs> yes. like there's something like separates right. mike from the pack yeah. and as yeah. he passes the break room you're like mike's fucking crazy you know, they're <laughs> doing yeah. chin-ups every morning at mm -hmm. 6 a.m with a bunch of other assholes down on sepulveda at the crossfit center and you you get this feeling like i belong to this group of yep. of uh, unusual people doing unusual things it's, and you it's a social process and also that's well that's what religions do in part yeah you know it's it's our group here and we're mm -hmm. meeting once yeah. a week or whatever and we have these rituals it's all like that they're very attractive to people those things very there's, there's a book called uh, bowling alone uh, by a sociologist <laughs> that uh, sort of tracking the decline of social Things like bowling, bowling mm. leagues, you know, the no yeah. one, there's not very many bowling leagues anymore, but more and more things like that. We're, we're more isolated. We do our own thing on, on your computer at home or whatever. And that this is a, actually, it's a good thing to get out there and have a community. But as always, you know, it's the extremism that, you know, I'm going to do this six hours a day. Easy. Right, right. Uh, I mean, this, this guy, Phil Grenache, he ended, up, he ended up dying early because he just worked out like eight hours a day. He keeled over dead in his gym. I don't know what the cause Jesus was. Jesus Christ. Day. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I mean, it's like, God, he used, he had this workout routine that he had a like a $5,000 challenge that anybody that could match him for the 45-minute workout routine in his home gym. And Olympic cyclists would come and all these super studly guys and no one ever made it because it was so specialized for just what he does. You know, like one arm chin-ups or, you know, one arm push-ups or, you know, the Stairmaster. He built his own Stairmaster before anyone had Stairmasters. And he would just, you know, just crank it up at such a high level that you just can't do it. And it's all, that's all he did. Right. So, you know, was he fit? You know, was he healthy fit? I don't know. Well, up to the point where you're dead. Yeah, that's probably it's an argument. It. But once you die from it, I go, you're probably not doing it right. We used to ride around Orange County, and we, we, he'd go, see that lady out there Sunday morning getting her paper, cigarette, coffee, donut? Look at that. She's going to chip.